You know, the Bible is so embarrassing. Now, before you go down to the comments box to pen a scathing message about my thoughtless approach to the scriptures, just hear me out. Nobody likes to admit when they're wrong, nobody likes to confess when they've lied, and nobody likes to reveal their failure because it opens us up to being vulnerable. And this idea of hiding our flaws and our wrongdoings and embarrassments is a characteristic of the human nature that's been around for a very long time. You know, in the past, ancient rulers, they embellished, they hid, and they even lied about their policies, conquests, and battles so that their reputation wouldn't be tarnished in the annals of history. I'm reminded of the story in the Bible when the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, marched on Jerusalem during the reign of King Hezekiah. And Sennacherib's massive army surrounded the little tiny capital of Judah. And in a moment of desperation, King Hezekiah cried out to the Lord in 2 Kings 19.19, Now, O Lord our God, rescue us from his power, so that all the kingdoms of the earth will know that you, Lord, are the only God. That night, an angel of the Lord killed 185,000 Assyrians who were encamped around Jerusalem. However, in Sennacherib's retelling of the account, which actually can be found on a prism which is in the British Museum called the Taylor Prism, he leaves out the most significant part of the story when he lost many of his forces in a single night and that the living God's message was true. The famous Old Testament scholar R.K. Harrison wrote this, the defeats or failures were invariably ignored when chronicles were being compiled by Near Eastern nations. In short, listen to this, Harrison is saying that sometimes historical truth and the stories of ancient kings like Sennacherib, they just don't seem to match up. And yet the Bible written during this time when royalty would hide their flaws in propaganda, is full of stories and accounts that often put key biblical characters like Abraham, who lied, David, who cheated and murdered, and Peter, who denied in awkward and embarrassing positions made available for pretty much all of human history to read. The vulnerability of the scriptures is a strong indication that its words were not manufactured like the chronicles of ancient kings, but that the embarrassing moments of biblical characters are laid bare to show that God's word is true. To prove the authenticity of the gospels, many New Testament scholars, they employ this method called the criterion of embarrassment. And this is a tool that they use to show that the stories within the Bible are often so humiliating that they must be considered true because the author would never choose to contrive such an embarrassing story about himself or the church. For instance, think about this, the story of Peter's denial. It's found in all four Gospels. The story consists of Jesus' prediction of Peter's betrayal and Peter's triple denial of Jesus. This story is embarrassing to one of the most prominent apostles of the church, yet it remains in the story of the passion of Christ. If this story was invented, I am sure Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John would have never painted their friend Peter in such a negative way. Also think about this, the cross. The cross was considered the most despicable form of capital punishment in the Roman world. And the authors of all four Gospels mention that Jesus suffered death under this form of capital punishment. The criterion of embarrassment would say, if Jesus' death was invented, then why would the authors of the Gospels choose the most deplorable form of Roman execution to kill Jesus? The church would have not invented material that embarrassed or threatened its credibility in both the Jewish and Roman world. See, God is very clear about the method he uses to communicate his truth to a lost and broken world in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27. Listen to what Paul says here. He says this, But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. So is the Bible full of embarrassing stories? Yes. But those stories show the authenticity of God's word in a very skeptical world. I'm Chris Katolka.